Hey everyone, Chris from Flipmath, and we're going to go through today's topic, which is on coordinate geometry. And we're going to go through the equation of a line, or how to find out the equation of a line. It's a part of the AS Maths module for C1, uh, for the C board, or part of my Maths Methods course. Objectives in this lesson are to calculate the equation of a line, and just calculate the gradient of a line between two points and then use that to find the equation of a line thereafter. This was an introduction. You may remember a bit about this from GCSE when you did it. Um, you probably would have used the equation of the line y equals mx plus c. And for many of the equations, or many of the, um, the answers that we get here, we are going to display our answer in the form y equals mx plus c. So I'm just going to find the equation of a line what we're going to try and show, and I'll do a quick, quick recap of it here, is how to read the gradient and intercept of a line from the equation of a line. So if I show you the equation of a line such as y equals 3x minus 2, this is the relationship that the y coordinate has to the x coordinate. So to get the y coordinate, I multiply the x coordinate by 3 and then take away 2. The gradient or the slope of the line is the value or coefficient of x. So this number here. So the value of x, which in this case is plus 3. The gradient, if you remember, is a measure for how steep the line is. So the higher the number, the steeper the line. And negative gradients actually slope in the opposite direction. If you go back to that, we'll have another previous video in the series that you can look at for that. So the second value is where the value cuts, or the, where, where the value, where the line cuts the y-axis. So if I show you the graph of what this graph looks like, this is y equals 3x minus 2. And... At this point here, you can see that the minus 2 is where it cuts the y-axis, and that equates to the minus 2 that we have up here. Now, that's only ever true if we have 1y equals to the, the rest of the equation, but as long as it's in that form, we can read the gradient off here as 3, and the intercept off is minus 2. So I'm going to show you two examples of how you calculate the equation of a straight line. Uh, and the difference in the two examples is just how much or what way the information has been given to you. So the both examples, you're going to use one main equation to calculate the equation of a line. In GCSE, you used y equals mx plus c. But in this one, in AS and in math, math, method, math methods, we end up looking using this one, which is y minus y1 equals m upon x minus x1. And I can show you the proof for it in class if you want, but otherwise you're just going to use the equation that we've got there. Okay? And but then it, it has three values that you need to substitute in. So it's three places where you can substitute in values. The first one is there, the second one is there, the third one's there. And if I go through what each of them are, the first one, y1, is a, what, the y coordinate of a point that lies in the line. So you need to somewhere in the equation have been given or be able to calculate the y coordinate of a point that lies in the line. The second one is the m, is the gradient of the line that we're trying to calculate. And x1 is the x coordinate of a point that lies in the line as well. So the three things we're going to look for to substitute in, and in some cases they'll be given to us directly in the question, and in other ones we'll have to calculate it first. So I'm going to put that equation down to the the bottom left here, and I'm going to take you through the first example. And it is this. Find the equation of the line that is gradient 2, and it passes through the point 2 minus 1. So as I pointed out in the last page, we need to obtain three values before continuing. We need to find the y coordinate of a point that lies in the line, and the x coordinate of a point that lies in the line to start off with. And you can see that they're given in the question at this point here. So 2 minus 1 is the x coordinate and the y coordinate of a point that lies in the line, because it says that passes through the point. We'll label those as x1, y1. So x1 is equal to 2 and y1 is equal to minus 1. The gradient is also supplied in the question at that point there. So the gradient is 2. And we can say that m is then equal to 2. Putting all this together, that's m equal to 2, x1 equals 2, and y1 equals minus 1. So if I continue on that question, I'll just substitute my values into the equation. So if y minus y1, which is the minus 1, equals m, which is 2, upon x minus, and again, x1, which is 2. And I've shown those values in red so that you can see. Once we're at this point, we can just multiply the brackets. The y minus minus 1. The minus minus 1 gives me plus 1. 
And 2 upon x is 2x, and 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. The last thing we need to do is rearrange the equation so it's y equals everything else. So in that case, all we're going to do is take the plus 1, we're going to move it over so it becomes a minus 1, and then we can tidy up the numbers at the end to give us y equals 2x minus 5. And that is the equation of the line that is gradient 2 and that passes through the point 2 minus 1. Next example. Next example we have is find the equation of the line that passes through the points 2 minus 1 and minus 4, 2. So in this equation, we've been given two points in the line rather than one point in the line and the gradient. So we don't actually have the gradient. And as I'll show you later, we can use either of those points as our x1, y1 when we put them into our equation here. But with no value for m, we need to calculate it from the two points. So we're going to use another equation to do this. You could do it graphically if you want, sketching it out. And it always is a good idea to sketch the graphs out or the points out that you have so you can see whether your answer makes sense. But we're going to use m, the gradient, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or the change in y over the change in x coordinates, or sometimes, as, as some teachers call it, the rise over run. So how far it goes up or down by how far it goes across or to the left. Okay, so x in this case, you know, x1 and y1 are the first x and y coordinates, and x2 and y2 are the second x and y coordinates. And it kind of doesn't matter which way around you go, it'll just end up moving your signs around the other side, but it'll always end up the same thing. So extracting that information, I'm going to say that x1, y1 is equal to the 2 minus 1, the first one we've given, been given in the question, and the x2, y2 is the minus 4, 2, which is the second coordinates in the question. So let's continue on with this then. So example two, we're going to substitute in our points for y2 and y1. So if I look at this, this is our second lot here, and this is our first lot. So if I take my y2, my well, y2 is 2 minus the first x coordinate is minus 1. So I have 2 minus minus 1, and then I have that's divided by the second x coordinate, which is minus 4, minus when I tidy that up, 2 minus minus 1 becomes 2 plus 1, which gives me 3, and minus 4 minus 2 gives me minus 6. That ultimately gives me minus a half, and I can use the m is equal to minus a half as my m over here. Uh, we can use either one of our two points as x1, y1, but I'm going to keep it the same one as I labelled beforehand. So the x1, y1 is going to be my 2 minus 1. And if I substitute in my values, I'll get y minus y1, which is minus 1, minus equals minus a half, which is or minus a half from that we worked out before, upon x minus the x1, which is 2. Once I'm there, I can multiply out my brackets. My minus minus 1 becomes a plus 1. And the minus a half times x comes minus a half x. And minus a half times minus 2 is plus 2 over 2, which ends up giving you plus 1. When I bring the plus 1 over to the right, it's going to end up becoming minus 1, so that will cancel out with the 1 here. And all I'll be left with is y equals minus a half x. You could put plus 0 if you want, but that would be sufficient just to leave it like that. And that is our answer. So that is the equation of the line that passes through the points 2 minus 1 and minus 4, 2. And that's what you get. So next time, we're going to look at what happens or what information can we extract from parallel and perpendicular lines. So what do, can we illustrate from that? And what kind of questions does that then lead to? All that's left to do now is go over our objectives, which, is cal which will calculate the equation of the line and calculate the gradient line between two points. The two examples that I showed at the end should have done that. So tick and a tick. And you've got left to practice. For exercises, solutions, quizzes, and downloads around the subject, go to Flipmath and search for coordinate geometry. Feedback and all resources should be sent to you at Flipmath. And uh, you can leave any comments in the video if, if that's a problem as well. All right. Uh, I'll catch you next time. And thanks for watching. Bye.